Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me. And guys, just before I start, I want to let you guys into a little secret, okay? I've been absolutely raging all day. Um, the video I posted earlier on, if earlier on today, if you've not seen that, go and have a look. At, go and have a look at that. The um, one of the links in this description about this guy, and he's talking about this um, this new laser that the UK has got. <coughs> you know. I, I, I voiced my opinion pretty clearly in that video, but, you know, the more I look at him and his smug face, and I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, right, mate, you have no idea what you're talking about. You've got no operational experience. All you know of is probably what somebody else is telling you. And this is, you know, this is the reality of the of the, the information we're getting given at the moment. We're getting given given our information by people who don't know the words they're saying. You know, they're just words. And um, the more I think about it, the more angry I've been getting all day, guys. So I just thought I'd share that with you before we start with today. So today, guys, I'm going to talk about food shortages and water shortages. Now, and how paradoxically those, um, you know, even though we've been having massive, massive amounts of rain in the UK, that we're going to have a low crop yield this year because there's been too much rain. And, you know, the farmers in the UK, they can't plant their food can't plant what they would normally plant. Now, if we couple that as well with the, you know, the conflict in Ukraine, and, you know, I, I know this has been said quite a, a lot, um, but what I, I just don't think people really understand the implications of this war in Ukraine and how that has a knock-on effect and, like, you know, um, what is it? If uh, I think if a, there's the old Chinese saying, if, like, a canary flaps its, a butterfly flaps its wings in this place, then there'll be a hurricane in this place. Oh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but the reality is, you know, Ukraine is a huge, I mean, the main um, exports of Ukraine are basically corn, wheat, some flour oil. Uh, I think, you know, they're the main, you know, they're the main uh, core exports of Ukraine. And that's just not been getting out. So other countries have had to take up the slack, which means that those, you know, for example, corn, wheat, you know, there a lot of that is used in feed for other animals. So livestock, so the price of livestock's going up um, because the price of livestock's going up, then they're going to have to sell it somewhere else. So the transport costs go up uh, and it just has a huge knock on effect to everything. Um, the Black Sea shipping in Ukraine, which is how they'd normally get things out. And guys, shipping is always going to be your cheapest method of uh, your cheap cheapest method of transport because the water takes 40 percent of your weight because of buoyancy you know physics and stuff so that's why you know shipping things well yeah shipping things out by sea is always going to be cheaper but you know the ukrainians have had to i guess ship or transport their grain out using the train tracks now the problem there is the ukrainians are on um a Soviet train track, which is like this big. And then when they come into Europe, the European train tracks are like this big. Now, this is a two effects, really. First of all, exports, it's made it very difficult because exporting anything from Ukraine, you have to take it out on one train, then put it on another train so it can get into Europe. Also, inward imports, and I'm talking about weapons, uh, munitions, humanitarian assistance, you get the same problem. It can come in from train from Germany, Poland, wherever, but then it has to go onto the Ukrainian track, uh, the Ukrainian sized train. So that's having another problem. But with these food, um, with these food shortages, you know, the world's facing a global food shortage. I'll put, I'm going to put a link in the description of um, an article by. Global food, global report on food crisis, 2024 food crisis, crisis uh, joint analysis for better decisions. Now, I'll let you read that yourself, guys, okay? But that goes into, you know, in really into depth about, you know, the what's going to happen in the next couple of years, how all these conflicts around the world are going to feed into the narrative of food scarcity, basically. And again, you know, crazy things are happening in the world like this war. It seems to me there's a war on farmers like the Dutch farmers. It, it makes no sense to me at all. Um, so so already, you know, locally, we're having trouble producing food. Internationally, we're having trouble um, producing food. Water. For those of you who follow me, like I always harp on about water and the, you know, the importance of water. 
Well, you know, it turns out in the UK, we've had too much water, which has stopped the crops growing. But, guys, and you couldn't make this up, all right? And I'm not even joking. But, even though we've had too much water, guys, okay, we're still going to have, um, we're, there's still a likelihood that we have uh, hose pipe bans and water shortages ourselves this year. Why? Because the water companies, they just don't invest back into the system. They take their profits and they give that to the shareholders. The shareholders buy their Lamborghinis and that's fine. And then when it rains, like it has done now, we don't have any infrastructure to capitalise on that rain. We have no infrastructure there in place to, you know, to, to save that rainwater. So the rainwater goes, it goes, and eventually that gets washed back out into the ocean. So, you know, we've got this cauldron at the moment and I feel that if we have a particularly hot summer this year, and I don't know whether that's going to happen, but if we have a particularly hot summer, then all this is just going to, you know, it's just going to be an absolute catastrophe. Um, what does it mean for the UK? I don't think we're going to run out of food per se in the UK, but what is going to happen is there's going to be huge price increases as countries compete for the available stocks of food. Obviously, that's going to put the price up and then you will get famine in poorer countries, which is absolutely terrible. But you will get famine in those countries because they can't afford to pay those prices. So it's just, you know, it just goes from bad to worse and nothing good happens. And it just shows how delicate our food system is with our water system and our agriculture. And we should be putting more, uh, we should be investing more money into agriculture. Why don't they teach agriculture at schools? Why don't they teach people how to grow their own gardens at, you know, at schools instead of, I don't know. I can think of lots of stupid subjects at school, but growing your own food and having the ability to stay alive, to me, sounds pretty, you know, it sounds pretty, uh, pretty up there on, on, your, on your list of uh, subjects to do. Guys, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Who knows? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Also, guys, please give me a like and a follow and a subscribe when you do that. We've got two platforms now and I'm posting twice a day here. Should I post three times a day? I don't know. Let me know. Did my microphone go? Guys, and that is it. And I hope you have a great evening.